All right, well, we are starting a new chapter. We have completed our chapter on sampling continuous time signals to get to a discrete time signal. In this chapter, we start diving into the details of discrete time signals and systems. In this set of charts, we're going to introduce some of the basic concepts of discrete time signals and systems, and we're primarily going to focus on what I call signal classification. So the goal here is given a discrete time signal or a continuous time signal, to be able to tell properties of that signal. So we're gonna have a whole kind of laundry, laundry list of characteristics, and we'll be able to identify signals as having those characteristics. Is it discrete time or continuous time? Is it random or deterministic? Is it an energy signal or a power signal? So we'll kind of go through this list of definitions and characteristics that signals can take on. So like I already mentioned, really the goal of this class is to introduce some very basic concepts related to discrete time signals and systems. And what we're primarily gonna do in this chapter is look at signals. So the signal classification problem is something I mentioned. What type of properties does a signal have? We'll look at that. And we'll also spend some time introducing and defining some very common signal types. For instance, what is the discrete time unit step function? What is the discrete time impulse function? What is a discrete time sinusoid? What is a discrete time exponential? So lots of the kind of building block signals that we'll be using in the rest of the class, we will introduce and define those. And then we'll also start talking about some basic signal operations. How do you add discrete time signals? How do you multiply them? How do you time shift them? How do you time reverse them? So again, a lot of the kind of building blocks that we'll use throughout the class, we need to define these core operations. We'll also get a little bit into systems. This is not a very system heavy chapter, so we'll talk just a little bit about systems and give some examples of discrete time systems. But again, the emphasis primarily is going to be on signals. So just as means of introduction, we've probably seen this definition before if you've been watching the whole sequence of videos. But in terms of what a signal is, we have a very general and uh, generic description of a signal. For our purposes, a signal is just a function that contains information. In this class, the signals we deal with are almost always going to be discrete time because this is a course on discrete time signals and systems. And when we talk about discrete time signals, we are talking about what I would think of as a signal of one variable, discrete time index k or n or m. So we have just one variable that indexes the signal. Our definition here, you'll notice, is a little bit more general than that. We say that a signal is a function of one or more variables. Sometimes the signals that we deal with contain more than one variable. For instance, images you can think of as two-dimensional signals, right? There's kind of the row and column of the pixels that you're working in. So those signals contain two variables. You can get more complicated than that. In radar, we often deal with signals that have kind of a range component, a Doppler component. So there's another two-dimensional signal as well. If you're working on more advanced things, you might have a range, Doppler, and space component. For instance, if you're working with a system that has lots of antennas, you might have signals on every single one of those antennas. So there's not just kind of a time aspect to the signal, but a space aspect to the signal as well. So our definition here covers all those bases by letting us deal with signals with one or more variables to index the information. However, for this class, almost always we'll be talking about discrete time signals. These are signals that we can plot on paper very easily because they're just a function of time. And now our definition of a system. Again, it's a very general kind of all-encompassing system. In general, we think of a system as some object or entity that manipulates signals. So usually there are signals going into the system. The system manipulates those signals to accomplish some goal. For instance, if I'm talking about a communication system, the goal of the communication system is to take some input signal, transform that signal, usually into some type of modulated signal, and then transmit that modulated signal onto a channel, which could be you know, the air or copper or fiber optics. So at the transmitter, we have a system that does something and manipulates signals to accomplish a goal of communicating it to some other entity. More complicated systems, for instance, radar systems, they do different things. This system is going to listen to signals in the environment that it has radiated. So it's gonna radiate out a signal, that signal's gonna bounce off of things and it's gonna come back. 
And then the goal of that radar system is to extract information about the environment. That can be information about objects flying around. If it's a weather radar, it could be information regarding the um, weather in the environment. So there are lots of different types of radars with lots of different functions. The exact type of processing that it does, the exact manipulations that it does, are going to vary from radar to radar and from system to system. But the overall objective is to generate new information that is useful for the user. So you can think of that as manipulating signals to yield new signals. So that is our very kind of general definition of a system. In this class, we're going to focus um, quite often on what we call discrete time, linear time invariant systems. So you can tell that I've kind of restricted the class of system there to what is called a linear time invariant system. We'll define that and we'll develop a lot of rules and equations for how we analyze those types of systems, both in the time domain and in the frequency domain in this class. All right, well, that concludes our very brief introduction into discrete time signals and systems. The goal there was just kind of to outline what we're going to be doing in this chapter. This is our next big topic. We want to talk about signal classification. If I give you a signal, the goal is to be able to tell me things about that signal. So these characteristics right here, we're going to work through one by one in the subsequent videos to understand what these properties are and how to tell if a signal has these properties.